What's going on, everybody? This is Hot Mike with Lady She. I'm the host, Lady She, of course. I'm here with these three gentlemen, three of the party of four, of four. Four hundred. Four four hundred. Four four hundred. Four four hundred podcast. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. Thank you for thank you. coming. Thank you for having us. For yeah. sure. For sure. For sure. I'm excited. Listen. First question. What does that mean? Um, the name of the podcast. What does that um, mean? Four four hundred stands for. Uh, it's, 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 play, it's a, a play on words. Is um, you know when you go buy something for on sale, you get four for a dollar, <laughs> something like that. But we made it four for hundred, and at the end of the day, you get four men with four different perspectives that's getting hundred percent of me their reality. Ooh. So that's pretty much what it is. And you get it in a distance. I like that. You better yeah. write that you one know, down. Y'all might have to really write that, that, that down. That flow. <laughs> putting that on our bio. Nah, real talk. I love that. That was so good. So, okay. Four friends. I'm a swimmer. Yes. yes. Right? How'd you guys meet? Um, I'm, I'm a lot. We're not friends. We're brothers. Y'all yeah, brothers. Yes. Yes. We're brothers. Yes. Make four it clear, brothers. sir. Brothers. Right. Like the movie. Four brothers. Yeah. Love that. Love that. So how do four brothers meet? I'm more woke. I'm more woke. Oh, Andre, no, that's right. a fact. That's a fact. Make it clear. Make it clear. Which is what I am. So, how did you guys meet? Um, me and Kush, we grew up together in the same house. Uh, pretty much. That's just Kush. That's Kush. Hi guys. <laughs> um, uh, and then, as far as everybody else, Mike came. We met in college. Okay. So he became a part of the family. What Welcome school you went to? What school y'all went to? Pratt Institute. Okay, Pratt. Okay. Our school, yeah. Brooklyn. Yeah. BK, BK. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Right, so we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't forget about our four folks. He's not here, but he also grew up with us as well. Right. Him and Stu are actually biological cousins. Oh, you yep. are. Yeah, yeah, that's my biological cousin. He in trouble right like now. Cousin he's cousin missing an action. He uh, he's taking out the garbage. <laughs> nah, he's taking out the garbage. Listen, he, he got responsibilities. He's making right. responsibilities. And right. like I said, once again, thank you so much for coming on, taking our time to come on, um, the hot mic. So, brothers. Right. Who came up with the idea to say, let's do a podcast? Kush. Mr. Kush. All right, first of all, Tell we have yourself. Kush, we have Mike, mm -hmm. we have Stuart. Stuart, and we have... Ubika. Ubika is missing in action. Yes. Okay, just want to make sure... Hope they you don't drop out the ceiling in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah. Right? Listen, I ain't mad. We, listen, <laughs> views is views. All right, so, now, brothers, right. podcast idea, where did this come from? Uh, so, for me, we... We sit around, we have a lot of intellectual conversations with each other, um, and the idea that we all live separate lives, mm. um, we all don't agree on everything. Actually, we don't agree on most things, um, <laughs> but we, we, we're able to have them in an educated fashion where we're not, you know, where we could, we could play on each field. Mm -hmm. So I think um, it was important for us, I think, to not only give back to our community, but talking to young men. But at the same time, um, let other people know in other communities that everybody that looks like us is not ignorant or everybody is not um, about to rob you. <laughs> yeah. How about that part? Yeah. Word. What's, what's your take on that? Uh, yeah, so I would kind of echo that same sentiment. I think we've been doing the podcast without cameras for a long time. Nice. We've had this, like you said, we've had this dialogue amongst ourselves as brothers. And a lot of the times when there's, I'm not going to say outsiders, but folks that get to see kind of our inner circle, mm -hmm. I think we're welcomed with that same sentiment. Like, yeah, Yo, you guys really connect. You can talk to each other. We, I'm not going to say we don't argue. We have high heated debates. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it never seems like that. We don't use that now. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, it never turns into anything beyond the discussion. So once right. the discussion leaves and we walk out that door, again, we're brothers essentially through and through. But, again, we can, we can have these tips and these um, disparities in our ideas and ways of thinking. But that's how we learn because we got to essentially go through shit to get through shit. The facts. The facts. What about you, Um, Same thing. Uh like I said, you just get, and like I said, when I said the meeting for 4400, you just get in four different perspectives. We all different in our right. own way. So being that we different, we all have our own ideas of what we should, what th we think things should be. Right. So with that being said, that's pretty much it. And now we get to, you know, convey it. You know, right. everybody gets to see. And if you don't agree with him, you can agree with him. If you don't agree with me, she could, you know, you can agree with Ubika. But, you know, you we reach everybody. And that's one of the things we want to do. Just not talk about them, not talk below, but talk to them. And let them know, like, yo, we understand. Somebody out here think like you too. Nice. You know? Right. Love that, love that. So, as, okay, so let me let me just share really quick, for those who don't know. Um, this this episode is going to be a part of my Men Where Art Thou series. The Men mm -hmm. Where Art Thou series 
is um, me creating a space for our men to share whatever they desire to share. Um, it came from me being a woman, I'm a mother, I'm a sister, I only have brothers, I'm a boy mom, I got a black husband, and I just live in America. Mm -hmm. And I see how our men deal with things differently and they are treated differently. So I wanted to make this series about our men. So um, with that, do you feel like your podcast is a space where men could just feel safe? Because I feel like a lot of men speak as if they don't have a safe space. Like they're not okay to share. They're not okay to have a moment where they're vulnerable and I look at it as angered. They're not okay to have a moment where they actually get emotional and not be called a punk or a sissy. Like is I, that what the podcast so I, is I, like? I, I'll start with that one. Um, I actually watched one of your other series just recently with uh, the director yeah. you had on there. That was, yeah, the, um, and um, he brought up a good point about um, like men feeling like being like being being called a sissy or whatever, and I think um in a couple of our episodes actually our episode two actually right. plays to the emotions of men and um and and we ex we 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 show uh, an example that you know around each other we can be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. There was things in that episode that we didn't talk to each other about, but in that moment um, we spoke about it in that room, mm -hmm. and it felt good, and it was we were allowed to be vulnerable mm -hmm. as men. And I don't think we usually have a space for that, but I think we are trying to create that space mm -hmm. in today's time. But like I said, I was second episode. We definitely talked a lot about that. Now y'all went in. That was good. Yeah. Episode two. Make sure I check it out. Mm -hmm. Check out all of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying in specific uh, episode two for sure. What are, What are your thoughts? Yeah. So that definitely speaks to the idea that we were going is we didn't want to create a safe space. We already had it. Mm -hmm. And the safe space that we do have is talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Not saying that we don't have women in our life that we can't talk to, but as men, the way that we structure ourselves and the way that we've been brought up and raised to kind of keep things in, it's purposeful. Yeah. And it's not mm -hmm. just to be a man, it's to be a man who doesn't want to be hurt, doesn't want those um, doesn't want those things that we went through in our past that we're bringing up in a vulnerable state to be used as a weapon. I kind of, we talked about this jokingly. Um, that, that if we were supposed to be Superman to our women, it feels like sometimes Lois Lane is walking around with kryptonite Ooh. in her purse. Yeah, that's and anytime, she bling, bling with the kryptonite. Oh, anytime no. we step out of pocket, she would just take it out and be like, look, I got mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you spoke about that one of the later episodes. That's actually coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, fine. But um, again, being able to talk amongst your brothers and talk comfortably knowing that there's a camera there, but also knowing that the men that are directly there are not going to judge you, but more so probably either advise you or at least understand you, yeah. and that's that means more than than most people really know. Like you, you need somebody to understand before they can give you any kind of feedback. Yeah, that was good. I just um, like I said, uh, let everybody know you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you shouldn't let anything that happened to you determine your life. Um, like I said, we all are different, and whatever we went through in our lives, we still had to be men and handle our business accordingly. And I think that's something that things that's something that a lot of men don't understand. Sometimes they feel like I, I'm in this run, I have to stay in this run. And you don't have to stay in that run. And you can still do you know, develop from that. You can still grow and you can heal. Uh, one of the things for me from that episode, uh, personally, uh, my father had like seven kids and um in episode two I talked about my father not even know that knowing that he saw me in, in person. He walked past me a few times. So from that episode I, I came with a better healing from my siblings and they under, have the understanding like, look, just because he didn't recognize you, we went through stuff with him too. And, you know, from that from that episode, we have a family reunion coming up and stuff like that from that side of the family. So it's, it's, it's that's what we want, you know, yeah. and, and, and for ourselves to heal and for other people to heal as well. Love that, love that, love that. So now, are all you dads? Yes. Yes. Yep. So we have children? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Girl dads, everybody's a girl dad. Everybody's a girl dad. And a boy dad. Yeah. Okay. I told you, I told him I could teach them how to make a boy. <laughs> <laughs> so the last yes. one, two, bang. You know? so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that that anecdote about um, you know your dad. Quick question. Well, first you can share what the dynamics were like growing up. If your dad was in the home, if he was not. But I want to know like. Do you kind of, this is what I'll say, what I hear all the time connected to black men. They try to say like, men, our men use the excuse of not having a dad in the home as 
like a blanket to say I'm not doing this that well because I didn't have right. that. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you say to that? Uh, I don't. I, you know what? I'll be fair and I'll be the person up here. I have my dad my whole life. Okay. My dad's a Vietnam vet, a post worker, hard working man. Got up every day. My mom passed when I was young. He raised me and my sister. And he helped raise my other mom's kids because I have seven brothers and sisters prior to that. So um, I don't. Wow. Wanna, I don't want to use the word an excuse. I think it's kind of real because I grew up a lot of, around a lot of people who didn't have fathers, and mm -hmm. I can see the difference and the impact. Mm -hmm. Even as an adult, I, they'll tell you. I even say, "Yo, my dad said I still use those references," and you know. So I think that's a real thing. I don't know if it's an excuse. Mm -hmm. I think it's a real thing that the generation before us um, kind of failed a lot of us, not purposely. Mm -hmm. I think they were figuring it out. You mm -hmm. gotta think like uh, that part coming from a, a place where, um, not to get too deep, but. When you're talking about um, slavery and everything, we're just fresh off of like the one with the King Malcolm X era and all the dads and the black men are figuring it out at that point, just now getting like real jobs. Mm -hmm. And when people tell you you're free, you gotta think about that, you're free to do what? You don't have no right. trait, you don't have no skills. So that was a, those are our grandparents. Mm -hmm. Our grandparents, they didn't have no, nobody was teaching them anything. Mm -hmm. It's just like you're free to be, yeah. be broke. Yeah, you're free to <laughs> run and figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I can uh, I can speak to the middle ground because just like him, I had my father my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, when I was very young, he went to prison for the first time. Mm -hmm. And since then, he's been back and forth three or four times. So again, having my father in my life, I never wanted for anything. My father and my mother always made sure I was good despite our circumstance living in the hood and you know being in an environment that didn't really foster a positive upbringing for most children, and I'm still around that and see the kids that are being raised in that environment. Um, but those times when, you know, he had to go away, right. it felt like everything was ripped away at that point. You know, I went from walking into school, first day of school with Jordans on, to now going to, you know, the local thrift store to try and find something that matches up to what, what I used to look like. Right, right. That kind of thing. So I understand where kids are coming from that don't have a dad and are trying to figure it out because they're trying to make themselves into men by modeling the image of men that they see. Right. And unfortunately, it's going to be the men that likely aren't positive role models. So if you don't have that man and you're looking for men or you're looking for a group of men, even young boys in terms of gangs, I see how easily they fall into that. I'm not even going to call it a trap. It's just right there. Right. If it was a trap and we knew it was a trap, we wouldn't mess with it. Uh -huh. But if you don't have any direction, you're going to walk right where everybody else is going and then you're, you're going to be lost. You're going to be in that same cycle of system. And if I didn't have my dad still instructing me from where he was at, I'd have been his roommate. Gotcha. Well, still. Um, Bring it home, Stu. <laughs> wow. Um, with that, talking about, because I didn't have my father. So we always established that I had my grandfather. My grandfather was a very influential person in my life. Tough, 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 yeah, tough, tough guy. Tough. He was very mm -hmm. tough. Um, <laughs> very. But at the same time, it's still not having your father. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's different. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's your grandfather, but when you see everybody around you have that, that person, mm -hmm. it, it bothers you still. And, you know, so with that being said, you have to be able to break that generational curse. Mm -hmm. And sometimes... It's easier, if you don't know, to not try to figure it out. Mm, explain that, though. Um, it's, like I said, if you've never seen it, you, you're not going to really search for it. And I think sometimes, as men, a lot of men don't want to search for that. They don't want to go through those trials and those tribulations to figure it out. Because it's easy. I didn't see it, so why should I even look for it? Mm. You know? So, uh, for me, personally, I, I didn't have that. And I still had to come... That, that ability to say, you know what, I'm not going to allow that to be for me. And I have to change that outcome, and I have to make sure that what I didn't have, I'm not going to allow it to be the excuse mm -hmm. for the future generation. Because I know how it affected me, and I didn't want it, that to happen to them. And you gotta, you got to want it. you got to mm -hmm. really, really want it. I was going to say one step removed from that was uh, my grandfather's. Contrasting again, I had one of them that was the epitome of grandfatherhood if we're going to make that a term for the day, <laughs> but awesome to this day, awesome makes sure all the grandkids, great grandkids are well taken care of. My other grandfather lived directly behind my elementary school and never, he, we never saw him. So yeah. when it was time for him to potentially be on his way out, he wanted to meet everybody. He wanted to, you know, see his children. He wanted to meet his grandchildren for the first time. 
I'm 30 plus years old mm -hmm. and I have no desire to, mm -hmm. to meet you. I don't even want to give right. you the opportunity to express your story because at this point, like you said, I'm not looking for it. Right. I'm not looking for a resolution. I looked for it a long time ago and you were nowhere around. So at this point, when I get, you know, it happens to a lot of celebrities that make it and then it's like, oh, your dad's coming around. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? He wasn't with me shooting yeah. in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got that money. Grandpa was somebody with that booty. <laughs> Dream father got a big mustache. Yeah. Right? <laughs> listen, listen, it's real though, it's real. So what what are what is okay, what is one of the things that as black men you feel that other cultures will never understand about you? I think that there's a misconception that regardless of if we're all seemingly at a starting point, we're not starting from the same place. And one direct correlation I can make is, is going to college. Again, we met freshman year of college. Um, when I got to college, it seemed like everybody there, and it was a private art school, so that gives a little bit of context. Everybody there had their MacBook. They had tons of art supplies. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking in fresh. I draw my ass off. I've been drawing my whole life, but I've been drawing on loose leaf paper with a pencil, you know? Right. And I'm getting a bullshit Dell computer for a hundred bucks from again the local thrift store. So I don't have the programs. I don't have the same starting point. It looks like we're all coming in as freshmen, but I haven't had any of the history that you guys have kind of created for yourself, or at least somebody else created for you, mm -hmm. up until this point to get you here. I bust my ass to make sure I can even have an interview set up. Right, right. Y'all knew y'all was coming in the door offhand, and y'all were ready. I'm still not ready, and I feel like there's a misconception that even when you see somebody especially a black man, get to a certain point, you think he's come a long way and he's put in the work. But I feel like you don't even know the amount of work that he's feel like he's had to do more of right. just to be in that same, you know, that same lane or that same avenue Absolutely. as his counterparts. That was good. Um, I think that the stigma that we have as black men uh, all together, um, no matter how much we say like, oh, we have to work harder, it, it's a real thing. Yeah. It's a real thing, um, and we and we can't ignore it. Uh, for me personally, I, I I push those doors down all the time. Anywhere I go, in my job or anywhere that I, I push those those avenues. But I'm not ignorant to the fact that that it's a thing. It really is a thing. That when you walk in a room, that the perception is, look at this hood inward. Usually, right? That's how people perceive you. Um, until you start having a conversation, or people do realize, oh, you went to Pratt. Oh, you you do have a degree, or oh, you do have a job, or oh, you do make this amount of money. Then all of a sudden, when you're at a barbecue or something, you start you start thinking as a black man like, so if I didn't have those things, would you mm. still feel comfortable communicating yeah. with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, maybe maybe it's a conscious thing with us, or maybe it really is a thing. But when you're addressing to somebody, they kind of pacify like, ah, it's all in your head. And, I think it's not in your head. Yeah. If I don't have this pool, if I didn't have this house, if I didn't have whatever I have, would you still feel comfortable hanging out, having a beer with me? Yeah. You know, if I lived back in Bed Stuy, yeah. if I was on the third floor, mm -hmm. but would, you, would I still get the same attention? Right. You know, so I, I think that's something that people would never feel. Yeah. That's what's uh, giving us a shot, a shot, and a fair shot. And then when I say fair shot giving us an opportunity to, to show who we really are. Mm -hmm. I think for a lot of times when people see us, even you can go anywhere, I could be in my work clothes, people, you can go to Wawa, and the, and the lady yeah, at the cat. Wait, y'all got Wawa's there, look at for real? You got a Wawa? Yeah. 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 You got a Wawa? Yeah. 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 Where you at? Yeah. In the woods. Yeah. Yeah. In the woods. We moved. We moved. Yeah. 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 No, flag. What? Yeah. You can be a Wawa for real. That's one down the street from me. Yeah, he's capable of hitting deer. Let's bring that. Bring your sandwich next time. Yeah. Moving on. Right. We're going to talk about something. <laughs> first of all, let's be clear. I need to understand. Wawa's not uppity, all right? right? It's definitely not. Right. But it's country. It's it right. country. Yeah, it's country. Yeah, yeah. Go yeah. ahead. But so, um, when they see you, you know, uh, people think still feel like they're better than you. Mm -hmm. I could come in there, I make way more money than the person that works at these any mm -hmm. stores or you go to any retail store and they see you, they don't feel like you're worthy or you even have the enough equity enough to sit there and purchase anything. So you always get that in itself when you purchase things and just in general, work wise, like he said, if I didn't have what I have, would you be talking to me? I, I deal with it all the time, uh, as far as when I'm working and you had hear guys and they say, Yeah, I own this and I do this and then you know, I don't look old. 
So I looked young, I have the baby oh, face. It's true, it's true. This guy, yeah. we, little, we little <laughs> lad. <laughs> he still gets us carded in clubs. Yeah. I'm like, come on, man. So with that being said, like, you know, I go into certain things and I'm able to have these conversations with them. They're like, wait a minute. How you, you know, what you mm. know about interest rates? What you know about owning a house? What you mm. know about this? What you know about that? What you, you know about the market? And they, or even politics in itself, they don't expect that from you. So now that you could be able, like you said, break those walls down, that's the most important thing. So moving forward, the next person that they meet, they may look like me. They're going to be able to have an open mind and give them the opportunity. Like, let me learn, learn, right. know who he is first mm -hmm. before I pass judgment. I, and, I'll say this too, uh, really quick. Okay. Um, I think that for the new generation, they do have a little bit different uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think the younger kids will have, it's, it's a, right now in our country, I think we have a good chance. I'm not saying it's guaranteed. I just think there's a good chance for our kids to not experience as many closed doors mm -hmm. as we've experienced. Because I feel like there might be a little bit more opportunities with computers the like these things that these kids are learning and I know you guys have kids mm -hmm. these kids pick these iPads up and they're like <laughs> they know more than me yeah, yeah. yeah. everything's no, at their fingertips yeah. yeah. so remember fingertip. my password your password yeah. his password yeah because I'm <laughs> definitely still trying to understand Robux just want to throw that out <laughs> I don't I know what Robux Robux is. Is. Robux. Now, they, 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 they off that yeah. now they on something else so they, I forgot what my daughter told us Minecraft they got all different types of things that was definitely a good point yeah, I was going to, again, just echo what he said. I, I feel like black men are not given the chance to be taken at face value. Now, if another person were to walk in here of a different race and say, hey, I'm a lawyer. Cool, you're a lawyer. Take it at that. Black man walks in here and says, hey, I'm a lawyer. All right, let me Google him. Let me see, let me see your ID. Let me see your yeah. credentials. Yeah. Prove yeah. yourself. Let me yeah. see what is your merit. You Holy have heard of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in the same thing, um, yeah, any kind of title that I feel like we possess or even... Um, any assertion that we make is like, prove it. You gotta prove it because yeah. your ass is black and that's not normal. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it feels like. Just <laughs> in case you forgot, yeah. you're black. Mm -hmm. We gotta know. We gotta know what's going on. Mm -hmm. No, that's, those are all excellent points. So now, just just listen to Grandpa being in the mix. You know, you, your dad going through the stuff he went through, your dad being a constant um, um, entity in your life. How does that play out with you? dating or you being a girl dad like what what does that say about the black woman to you growing up in the fashion that you you were raised well, i was raised by um predominantly black women but at the same time i feel like my mother and father had me at 17 and 18 years old uh, my mother was 18 so we kind of all grew up together we were figuring it out at the same time but Having the context of seeing my mother and my aunt and my grandmother bust their ass literally day in and day out for three black young boys that all, me and my brother and my cousin kind of all grew up together sleeping at grandma's. Um, not noticing it then, actually at, at some point being pissed off like, damn, mommy's going to a second right, job. Right, like, right. She's not coming to the baseball game. She's not going to be at the basketball game. And not realizing that the sacrifices that she made, they made, instilled in me what I am today in terms of a dad. Also knowing that that image is out there, the perception of what a black dad is to most people, but I've seen, I've seen the gamut. I've seen, again, the absent fathers. I've seen the fathers that were in and out that still wanted to be there. I've seen the fathers that weren't allowed to see their kids that are still trying to be great dads. And um, again, but seeing the, the structure that I was raised in gave me much more credibility when it was time for me to be a father. I knew exactly what, state, what steps to take, what things I wanted to avoid. And having that mixture, I was able to put something together where I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of my brothers for the fathers that they are. Mm -hmm. um, but it definitely comes from a strong background that I can say is attributed to my mother and my aunt growing up. Uh, for me, um, growing up with a, a dad makes it, um, it's tough. It's going to be tough for my son. <laughs> I tell you that because there's a lot of expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, there's an expectation of you being... Um, uh, a masculine man, you know, there's a thing where it's like, get up, you know, you can't, for, you know, there's that structure that's set in, so, you know, I don't feel like, uh, and my dad also is very present with my son as well, mm -hmm. so, you know, he, they're, they're more of his father sometimes than me, like, they they best friends, mm -hmm. so, it's still showing me, he's still showing me how to be a father, mm -hmm. because he's, he said, all the times I was at work right now, 
and I'm here with your son. It's like watching you grow up because I missed it. And the same thing with my daughter. It's like he, for my sister, he's like, I, I watch you like I'm watching you and your sister grow up right now all over again. So um, I'm still learning. Mm. I'm still learning, and I think it'll be fun to see 10 years from now. Ask me this question again. Too. <laughs> we'll do, we'll do, Can't we'll, wait to do that. Yeah, we'll do your show again, or you come that. when you do our yeah, show, yeah. Yeah. and you can ask me again, and I'll tell you exactly where it is. Can't wait to do that. For sure, that was good. No, it's great. Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult. I would say difficult because you, you're figuring out. I you have, have two my, girls. I have two girls. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I grew up with my grandparents, so I have my grandmother there. So she's the type of person that give you the clothes off her back. Mm -hmm. And regardless of what, even if she know you going, she was like, Jesus, I know Jesus is going to stab me in my back and she'll still give you the money knowing that you ain't going to pay. So that's the type of person she was, and I loved her for that. You know, I don't think I would get that to that point. Mm -hmm. But. You had some boundaries. Right? Jesus like. Yeah. Jesus like. She, she, you know what I mean? But. She's wet. You know what I mean? But for the most part, she showed me a great deal. Um, she's just one of those people that, you know, I, if it wasn't for her, I don't think I would be where I am today. My grandfather passed away when I was like maybe in high school, maybe freshman, sophomore year. Yeah, freshman, sophomore year. And she had to carry me the rest of the way. Right. So she passed maybe two years ago. And like, I wasn't, it hurt seeing her go, but it was good to see where I was when she did pass. Mm -hmm. That was the most blessing thing for me yeah. to say, to see, to show her, like, look. This is what you invested in, yeah. and to see what it came out to, mm -hmm. and you was a part of that, and that was the most meaningful thing. So when she, before she left, like cookouts, family events, and things like that, she was a part of, and she could see her. Mm -hmm. My grandson, the fruits, the fruits, the fruits, the fruits, the fruits, fruits. Yeah. My grandson then grew up, and, and he's become a man. So for that. Yeah, That's everybody the black drum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Toast to Granny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Real talk, no, that's dope. So now. Fathers, what do you guys do for a living? Uh, I, I'll say I started. I'm, I'm not gonna say directly what I do, but for the last ten years, I was in sports and entertainment. Okay. Management, I'll say. Okay. I'll agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> he do something. He makes some money. He go to work. Look, I'm scared. No. Okay. <laughs> what, you do? <laughs> what do you do, Stu? Um, I'm construction worker. I'm in Local Eight Union. Um, shout out to Local Eight. All my brothers. What's up? How you doing? Doing it for y'all, you know I'm out here. Local, local, you know what I mean? <laughs> See you at the union meeting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, represent. So, but that's that's what I do. So we do all commercial buildings. I did Tower Four. I did the Barclays Center. I did wow. Madison Square Garden. I did the, my resume is, is is impeccable. It's one of the best. Okay, Mike Tyson. Humble. Love you. You're so humble. You're so humble. Yeah. You're so humble. Yeah. You know. So, I want you guys to also tap into you know how you guys see us, a little something. Tupac has a, um, a bar in one of his songs where he says, they're growing up to hate the ladies that made the babies. Mm -hmm. Where did this come from? Like, how did we get here? I really genuinely want to understand, how do we get here where it feels like we, the women who are supposed to love you, are getting the hate? Hey, what, happened? what happened to us? Uh, what happened? <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm just going to do the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, in <laughs> Yeah. Um, for me personally, I would just say uh, we, we wasn't shown it. Men wasn't shown from other men how to treat women, you know, for, for a large part of that. Like, because a lot of times, if you was grew up in the 80s and the 90s, fathers was absent. Mm -hmm. You know, I think now fathers are starting to be more present in children's lives now in this present day than it was before. No, so, it, you sure. know, around that era, it's like, Who's going to show a man how to treat a woman if he ain't never seen it? So will we go off of, you know, what we see around us and precious, like he said. It's not a trap, but you're just walking into it because that's what's in, pr in front of you. And that's a lot of the times what happens. And now, the flip side of that, women are really right now are hating black men. And I feel like we're not getting our just due <laughs> as men. No, no, listen. You got a man from here? She sure <laughs> swing. No, no, swing. no, no, no. I, I, and, I think the roles are reversing, you know. We You're about to be two four hundred on this show. <laughs> <laughs> two, two, one, two, you know, you, you that's know. the cameraman. You trying to get on this show with us, man? 
got another one of them cut things. Yeah, that's yeah, a fact. Yeah. I said, I, I already We're looking for a new when remember. I came, when I decided <laughs> said she to do the CO2, show. too, she carry it. Yeah. You know, when I decided to do the show, I already knew I was going to take the heat for who I am. <laughs> so I'm already ready for what yeah. smoke. Let's do it. Let's do it. But like I said, um, I think the roles are reversing now. I think women are not respecting the black men as they should. Um, you, you hear a lot of time on social media and everything that goes on. I want to be strong and independent. A man can say, I can do this, but I can do that on my own. Mm. It's like, it's a lot of things that females do to knock us. And, I, and like I say, compared to other races, you don't hear those things, those tones from them. Okay. When you're referring to their men. So even if they Ooh. don't feel away, but that's it. These two sweat. Go first or? Ladies, I love y'all. <laughs> I love the ladies. Listen, no, I love no, ladies too, but I'm gonna just be it's honest. Gonna be honest. Yeah. Mike, say okay, no, nah, I'm gonna throw y'all a bone. Like, honestly, is this thing on. No. I'm gonna throw y'all a bone. Honest. I feel like, I feel like, black women, especially, suffered that same silence that we're talking about. They were fatherless, the same degree that we were fatherless. They don't know what it looks like, like you said, to have a man treating a woman well, even if it was no fault of their own. If they were outside the home because they were divorced. They still didn't have that father figure to show and represent, so they're going to the media. They're going to what they see. They're going to what's popular for the women that they want to be. So they're looking at these women that are dimes, for lack of a better term. Pop. What do they have? I want that. Mm -hmm. So, again, they're reaching and grasping at straws with no direction. It's like black men and black women are both sitting down trying to watch a Chinese movie. None of us have any idea what the hell is going on, but we're trying to figure it out, at the same time pointing at each other like, how you don't know what you said? How you don't know mm. what you said? And we're, again, we're just passing the buck and kicking the can down the road instead of addressing the issue. That was a good kick. That was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He been listening. He I'm like five for five right now. He killing it. Every wow. Okay. Okay. Look at uh, this one. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. like, I'm next. Like, I, mean, I like what he said. <laughs> I just like what he said. I think, you know, I... <laughs> no, um, I think it goes a little a little deeper for me. I think that um, the issue I have here is that uh, I think black men sometimes resent the black woman, and uh, and it goes both ways. I don't think we I think that. I think men sometimes resent the woman for not making you feel strong, but I think the women okay, sometimes you, resent the men for not protecting them, mm. because there's a lot of things that happen to a lot of young girls. Um, not just physically, when girls, when they realize they date 14 and they dating a 21-year-old, and we let a lot of that shit slide as a community, mm -hmm. we let a lot of the girls uh, hang out in the R. streets. R. Kelly ain't the only one. Yeah, 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 yeah that was a, a lot of R. Kelly. Especially when we were in high school, I mean, yeah. we're around the same age. Yeah, yeah. We're the same age. We know, in my hugs. I saw yeah. that dude in the Mustang. I saw yeah, that <laughs> yeah. That girls that 14 years old getting picked up by a dude um, from, from school. We all thought, like, oh, she got a cool boyfriend, but... No, not me. But go ahead. Still I'm sorry, no. But, it, no. but, it, but, it, but I, think that, I, think that, I think that our traumas, that, like we spoke about, I think our traumas sometimes, we don't know where to place the blame. And the blame goes sometimes to the woman because it's like, you're not making me feel like a man because you're not, uh, you're not highlighting my strong suits. Like, look, I went to work. I did all this stuff. I mean, I have that. I, I mean, I still feel that sometimes at my, my house. I'm like, I just went to work. I just did this, I just that, and you asked me to do laundry, right? <laughs> Wait, later on, when I'm thinking about it, I'm like, damn, I probably should have did the laundry. <laughs> but but I, sometimes, I think with women too, I think they, they, they don't, like you said, they don't have fathers. They didn't have somebody to protect them when that guy was touching them inappropriately, or when that person was texting them, or when they got those inappropriate pictures, or things like that. And I think women sometimes secretly resent the men. Y'all just have better hearts. Y'all don't push it on us. Y'all don't push y'all BS on us. Sometimes I think men wind up pushing their BS on women, you know. I'm out here in the streets, you know, selling these drugs or I'm doing whatever to provide for you. But really, sometimes it's a little bit of our selfishness because we like the cowboy, yeah, yeah, yeah. the cowboy stuff, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we don't have the father to tell us not to do it. We kind of enjoy it, but then we need somebody to blame. So it's like, hey, you let me tell the drugs or you let me right. be the gangbanger. Right. Another, another kind of aspect that I want to expound on with my answer is that when we encounter those women that are that are hurt and that grew up like us, they're hardened. So they have that same kind of shell, that same kind of toughness that you find or you seek in men, but men don't want to, we don't want to battle with you. Right, right. We don't want to deal with that. We want to come home and be the easy peace. Yeah. But you don't want to come home and essentially have to deal with your homeboy with lipstick on. Like, <laughs> you tough as hell. I don't want to have to do that. Not your homeboy with lipstick. And that's what it feels yeah, like sometimes. Like, yeah. Matt going on. Damn, man, you look just like Stu. <laughs> oh. So once love becomes yeah, hey, a yeah. competition. 
Put that fucking hat on. Put my chain on. Wait a minute. They got shot episode of this. Check up. We about to play three on three. Yeah, it's happening. Oh my gosh. Nah, that was that was all amazing. So how do we come to a common space where we can all what like, you just did? exist? What you just did? Mm -hmm. What you did? You asked us about our trauma. What we did on our episode, we talked about our traumas. We got to legitimately have these real conversations. Yeah. Yes. Communicate. But the same way that you're doing it is it's non-biased. It's not going to be judged. And you're really, at least for us, I don't know what you do with your husband, you're really listening because you're caring about what we're saying. Yeah. Whereas a lot of the times, again, when we're in that battle and we're dealing with that aggressive woman or that person that has that same kind of masculine energy as you have, then it's harder to actually come to an understanding because y'all are both here as alphas. Mm -hmm. And nobody really wants to understand. We talked about it before. If you're listening to reply, then you're not listening. Yeah, that, that was our communication that episode. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Cool. episode so, I think six, 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 seven, six. Six? Seven. 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 We'll get there. Y'all see it. <laughs> y'all gonna see it, for sure. But uh, go ahead, continue. Yeah, no, so what I was gonna say was, okay, being black, being a black man, professional, you're a dad, you're just trying to make it. Depression, how do you deal? I said this in episode two for me. I taught myself how to cope and block out those things and put it in the back of my mind. But is that coping? It, it, it is cope. For me, it coped because I'm here today. If I would let those things that are hard fester in my brain, maybe I would be the person I am today. So you got to figure, everybody's different. I said that too in episode two. I can't tell you how to f figure your thing out because that's your thing, mm -hmm. whatever thing you're going through. But I know for me, to get through the things that I went through, my mom's not there, my father didn't even recognize me if he walked past me four times. Probably wouldn't know if I, if he put me in a lineup, he probably wouldn't know that I was his son. So for me personally, at a young age, I figured it out that how I'm going to cope with it mm -hmm. is I'm going to take it, digest it and then you know what I can't change it I got to figure out what I'm gonna do next and that's how I attack my everyday life whatever goes on in my life I never let it pin me down mm -hmm. you know because I'm like yo listen I done been through it all mm -hmm. I've been through it all so I can get through this I can get through this and I'm going to get this because it'd be selfish of me to sit here knowing that I have these people that are depending on me to sit there and, and let that mess up anything or break me down or because it's no longer about me no more. My time is, like he said, I'm 30. I ain't got time to be worried about my grandfather. You're not 30. Dad. Uh -huh. You're not 30. No, I'm just saying, he's not like, 30. no. He's not gonna do that. We're not he gonna fake 30. it. We're not gonna fake that. Uh, that's that's what's not gonna fake it. Listen, no. was 30. If you're 30, I'm 20. <laughs> These boots is turning. To be clear, yeah, to be clear I'm the youngest person on the episode, and you are not 30. I might not look it because of like alcohol. I'm younger than you. He said because of alcohol. Oh, my bad. You got, that pretty, you got that pretty young skin, that's what it is. Just yeah. <laughs> the skin, that's all I got. Oh, and then you're all young and don't care. Yeah. <laughs> but like I said, it's just one of those things where you gotta, you have to figure it out. And you know, at the end of the day, you can go to a psychiatrist, you can go speak to a therapist, whoever you need to do, but it'll always come back to you. Okay. And how you want to handle it. Definitely want to come back to that response. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Get him, get him. Yeah. No, can, can you ask me? I'm sorry, can you ask me? Huh? Yeah. So I, I was basically saying all these different things, the aspects of who you are, your being, there has to be depression happens. How do you deal with it? Uh, unfortunately, the true answer is in silence. Mm. And that's not really dealing with it. Like you said, that's a way of, coping. and I'm not, I'm not even call it coping, that's a way of masking it because, again, the, that's the, fear, word. the fear of having it come back, the fear of having that very exposed moment, it feels like Shit, you're being naked in the auditorium. And sometimes I'd much rather be naked in front of an auditorium than expose some of the shit that I'm keeping from a potential person that would hurt me. Mm -hmm. So if that looks like, again, the main topic, if it looks like the black woman, if I feel like the things that I share will either not be received or they'll be received for the moment and thrown in my face later, mm -hmm. or if they'll be received and held, you know, just as, just as a token, just in case you got out of line, that kryptonite mm -hmm. in her purse, mm -hmm. Jeff That's Jack. what it feels like. Yeah. And again, <laughs> depression, depression, now I feel like we're at a time where it's being offered to black men much more 
Go yeah. to therapy. Go to therapy. Go to therapy. Talk to somebody. You'll feel better. To a degree, yeah. But I'm talking one-on-one -on -one with somebody who really doesn't know me. When I really want to be talking to the person that's right here, that knows me in and out, but is refusing to hear my cry. So mm -hmm. I got to go talk to a stranger to feel better. Mm -hmm. I feel like that, that for myself, mm -hmm. that's, that's not going to work. Only because if we're not collectively trying to either better ourselves or better even just me. If you recognize that I'm hurt and I need help, mm -hmm. walk with me. Right. Take these steps with me. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if we get all the way here and next week when you're feeling down, you decide to throw that shit in my face, I quit. I'm done. I don't need to talk to nobody. And see, and this is why I say it always come back to you. Because mm -hmm. like I say, you could, we could talk all day. I could express this all day to you. But at the end of the day, where did, where is it going to go? After we leave this session or wherever, I got to go back outside and take care of everything that is revolved around me. And I have to figure it out. Right. And, like, you may want to talk to that. Like he said, I want to talk to that person. My father's dead. Mm -hmm. I can't talk to him. Right. I can't talk to him ever. It's a wrap. Yeah. It's done. So. Just found that out on this episode. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, what is so, dropping so, bombs on the. Yeah, on the yeah, so, look at you with exclusives now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Let's go. 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 let us go let us go like I said, it, it comes back to you, and you got to figure out, you got to kick that crossroad, like, I'm going to go right or left, mm -hmm. and how, whatever decision you make, you got to be able to live with it, Yeah. and that's what it boils down to. Sadly, the solution for us, in terms of black men's personal therapy, looks like five minutes, quick cry, and get it over with, yeah. and move on. Got Make sure it. nobody see you, get it out, get it over with, keep it moving, and that's what it feels like it's been since I was a little boy. Yeah. Don't let nobody see that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll take a different play on it. I actually like what both of these guys said. We actually had an episode two where we talked about this, and uh, him and our other host should be good. They actually nailed the topic. So, you know, I didn't dive too deep into it, but I'll say this right now. I think one of the reasons you see a lot more um, depression and suicide and things of that nature in black men now is that um, I think we're experiencing different opportunities too, the lines of work that we're taking. We're experiencing different challenges that we didn't have before. And now we're working as corrections officers, police officers, MTA workers. We're seeing more things. We're, we're visually um, exposed to uh, failure now also. Mm. Because now you're in a situation where if somebody turns around and give you a job making a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars and you fuck that up, mm. you know, you know, you, you got a problem at that point, well, you know, you got a problem. So yeah. I think that pressure of being, like he said, breaking that generational gap becomes a little bit of weight on your shoulders when you're that one. If you come, if it's eight doctors in your family, you know, if you're the eighth one becoming a doctor, that's not that big. If you're the fourth one, who cares? Mm -hmm. You can be a fuck up. You know, yeah. excuse my French, you can be a mess up. But, mm -hmm. you know, you can't afford to be that when you're the only person. Yeah, you can't be Jackie yeah. Robinson doing that. Yeah, you can't mm -hmm. be that only person. And I think that's why you start to see more like the weight on your shoulders because not only that, then, then you get a wife or a girlfriend and then you get a kid. And then you get, you know, then you get these different responsibilities, and then you have a house. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I can speak for everybody in here who has have kids or property. Ain't nobody explaining you yeah. none of that Not shit. Whole None. Part. none. none okay. of you. None. Nobody told you about the taxes part. Yeah. Nobody told you you got to pay the oil or the gas and the. Yeah. You'd be like, tell me about sanitation. A person with a service. <laughs> yeah, you like sure. Yeah, you can't call the landlord <laughs> now so when you, <laughs> when your lights go out. You say, wow. My lights, you know, so I think all those responsibilities and there's, again, we're teaching each other. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm telling you, like, yo, yo he called me, when we have mortgage yeah, rates, yeah, yeah. when mortgage rates was going lower, he called me up, he said, bro, them joints is just two ends of change. So hear me, right? I never had this conversation, so now I'm fronting. I see that, <laughs> I know I ain't see that right now. I'm checking my emails. What that's on Yeah, I'm checking my emails. Like, I'm like, well, I'm like two. What what two you seen? Because I seen. So now I don't want to say the wrong number. He like it's two six. Oh, I'm that like, one. I'm that, looking at this one. I, saw, I was looking at another one that said two nine. <laughs> then I called the people and I'm like, let's do this. And then, right. Um, but uh, wow. but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we, that, we learn from each other. That's definitely that's definitely something. No, that's we, real. We definitely learned from each other. Like going through the process, we had like a indoor, like not indoor, but. In a competition, we've always been competitive well, since we was younger. Mm -hmm. It was like, yo, who gonna get the house first? Who gonna close in the house? And you know, ever since then, you know, it's friendly, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's family, but whatever. Now you jumped the line, bro. You got two houses. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you got two houses. You disrespected. 
Nah, not you jumped a lot. But you won it. But you won the first one. I gave the first one. All right, listen. I ain't gonna win. You gonna get two. I'm not getting two houses. All the people out there, I can't That's afford two houses. He definitely no. get two houses. He flipping one of them. No. He gonna get that money. No, no. I wait for. I wait. It. I wait for. I wait for her to blow up. He gonna do it. He gonna up. do it. When we all blow up, then <laughs> I call her and say, "Let me." We all blow up, but he definitely getting the two houses. That's yeah. a fact. That's Still a fact. Still not, cause I ain't cleaning. That's it. a lie. <laughs> <laughs> But you, you know, but it, it's like I said, it, it was definitely something like I, I felt like we brothers and I got to share the information. And I think that's, that's another thing, too, for us as, us as black men sharing the information and being able to be access, having access to the information is major. Right. You know, so I felt like, yo, my brother, he got one. So I'm like, yo, let me. Yo, I, this is what they talking about. I help out too. That, I'm, I'm gonna call them. Shit, drop like seven hundred dollars. Yeah, we gonna give them to them. Like, what you need, yo, bro? Yo, this is what they do. I'm about to pull out. I'm about to pull that trigger, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm about to give me some money, <laughs> and I'm about to lower my joint, and I'm gonna be good. Like, yo, what's good, bro? You better Let's jump on it. it. Tell you. You know I what like I mean? That. I'm like that. I'm gonna bring that back home to depression. I feel like black men receive information and Come everything on, else. For better from a black man. So mm -hmm. he was to say, yo, Mike, I went to therapy. Mm -hmm. That shit was dope. I got this one doctor. You need to go check him out. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if nine other people suggested it, I'm not hearing it. Yeah. Only because I trust that man. Yeah. I trust, again, my brothers, my circle, whoever, if you got that and if you got an experience where you have people that you could actually trust, have those honest conversations with somebody that you know isn't going to judge you. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's actually going to look out for you in your best interest and has no animosity later on down the line or anything else they're looking out for you in your best interest so if you can play off the successes even the therapeutic successes of everybody else i would say take that chance because yeah. it, it'll likely render something beneficial for you love that i know um you have mentioned the community and that i'm big on community like i have a heart for the youth you know, I've been working since I was 13. At 13, I was already feeling like I was a teacher. Teacher's kicking the truth to the young like, like you? That's mm -hmm. a fact. Definitely kicking the truth to the young like you. What would you say um, to the teens right now? Like, y'all know what I do. I'm a correction officer. It's still, even though I've, I got football numbers at this place, mm -hmm. whenever I see a kid coming in, it still does something to me. What would you say, you know, to that teenager that you see going down the wrong road, like knowing, who, being who you are right now, understanding what avenues you could have taken, what places you, you could have been in areas or in situations where you wouldn't even be here right now. Right. Like, what would you say to them to, to help them understand, listen, I was you, but such and such. There's other ways, there's other things to do. What would you say? First, I would say you got to speak, kids, so you got to hit them with the grip. No, no. What I would say to them is, and we also kind of tapped we, on this we, one time. Tapped tapped into this. But what I say is, and this is going to be my answer through and through, honestly, I don't think you can say nothing. Mm. I think you got to live it. I think you got to live God. through it. I think you just got to be it because. I know, I remember when I was a teen, I didn't want to hear nothing nobody got to say. And I know I say all the time, I wish somebody could have told me something, but <laughs> ain't nobody could have told yeah, me nothing. You know what I mean? Because yeah. the things, you know, when you're doing certain stuff, when you chasing after ladies, or you in the street trying to get money, or you think you uh, you think you think uh, paid in full, or whatever you think you live in, you know what I mean, because you see on TV, it's when you, get your, when you get your foot put in your ass. When you get the life, when life puts its foot in your ass, that's when you realize... Um, whatever, uh, unless somebody's consistently around you, unless you can legitimately take this kid and say, you know, I'm taking you to games, I'm taking you to parks, I'm doing this. Unless you can have that, words are empty for yeah. these kids. These kids, what they see, they spinning the blocks, they doing all that stuff. That's what's real to them. That's what's real to them. That this, These rap songs that they sing, that's the difference between this generation. If they talk about drill music, they really drilling people. Yeah. They are spinning the block for real. That's why if a kid tell me he's spinning the block, I'm getting my car and I'm out. Because yeah. that don't mean he coming back and give me a greeting card. That means he come back with the yappas. And I don't know where they get these guns from. Ladders and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. so I don't think you can say anything to them. I think you just have to legitimately be a, an example. You know, you have to be somebody who's with them. If you're not with them and you don't have the time to do it, 
think they playing for, games. I think they're for the streets. Yeah, I'm gonna do what you do. I kind of like his answer. So <laughs> I like his answer. Uh, That's how I do my homework. I just pretend I do one of these. I say whatever Mike does. I, I do have a two part answer because three ways I'm good. Because sadly, it, nah, you ain't. <laughs> I would say I got a two part answer because sadly it is true that for some for some of them they have to experience it. Personally, I, I have a nephew that grew up, in my opinion, you know, had the best of everything, but got into a situation just on the cusp of 18 years old that um, landed him behind bars for, for a little bit. And I ain't going to say he did a, a bid or anything like that, but it opened his eyes to see, like, mm -hmm. and I was shocked and surprised, like, I'm not going to say exactly what his crime was, but it was like, we don't do this shit. Right, right, right. Like, you've got better examples, but I realized as much talking as I do, you have to show. You have to show up. You have to be there. And I realized that no matter how much conversation we have, especially with the youth, like he just said, if you don't have somebody that is there consistently, it don't even matter if you're seeing them on the weekends. As long as they have that repetition to know, again, that somebody cares for them, they're going to care for themselves much more. Mm -hmm. They're going to be conscious of those things. And my answer to that question when we talked about it, um, my bit of advice was that you have to learn everybody else's mistakes. So if you see somebody that's doing something completely wrong and you know you don't want to end up behind bars like them, mm -hmm. learn his mistake. He did that shit and it ended up there. Don't right. follow him thinking it's going to change. Mm -hmm. Don't think that you're going to be able to you know, change the outcome by doing the exact same things that somebody else is doing. So if you unfortunately have to sit them down and see like, yo, listen, this is, you see your uncle, this right. is your daddy, mm -hmm. this is what you want to do. And Again, I had that personal experience knowing that I looked at my daddy as my hero, but every once in a while, like, my uncle would have to let me know, like, yo, that's not where you want to be. I know you love and you idolize your father, but if you do the exact same things, mm -hmm. that's where you're going to end up. Mm -hmm. So having that honest conversation with myself kind of led me to realize that you can't just talk to these kids. You actually have to show them, and if you are a father, even if you are a father that's not in the home, spend as much time as you can with that kid before somebody else does. And it's likely going to be somebody who's not a dad. It's going to be a bunch of other young dummies doing the same thing that you wish you would have did. That part. Stu! Bring it home, Stu. Stu got to take a shot and take a clothes shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, not Stu. <laughs> <laughs> um, I ain't got shirt down the mic. But, uh, <laughs> Try these on. Try these on. Find your passion. I think a lot of times as, as youth, um, especially young kids, we, we was in drum corps, and that kept us out, and we played basketball, so that kept us out of a lot of trouble. And um, it's easy for kids to be like, you know, the other kids that may not have that ability to be in those things that you're in, to make fun of you and pick you, pick on you because you're doing something that they're not able to do. Right. And I feel like a lot of kids nowadays, well, back in the day when I was younger, that was the thing. That's why he was able to do the, oh, that's not cool. Find your passion. Don't let no no don't let nobody tell you that if you're doing something constructive that that's corny. And I think that's what takes away the creativity of our culture. Mm -hmm. You know, we can be creative when it comes to doing something stupid or nonsense or making up some dumb. But when it comes to be creative to bring something to the table, to or be swimmers or athletes, hockey players, you know, like I don't think I don't think people are understanding. Us as a culture, when we join those things, we make that like Tiger Woods went Everything. to golf. Yeah. Golf is popping. Mm -hmm. Tennis, Absolutely. Serena, Venus, when they was in it, just tennis dominate. just went. Yeah. It, it it went off. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of kids, they gotta feel comfortable and understand. Yo, look, you can do the thing that they not doing. It's all right. Mm -hmm. Right. Just do it. And you never know where it leads you to. You know what I mean? So I think that's something we gotta tell you. I mean, not, stop trying to be the normal what everybody else do. Stop following the trends. Be yourself. Be original. It's okay. And that's what we need a lot more. We need more originality. We need more kids to come outside and say, you know what? I don't want to have to be a basketball player. I don't want to have to be a football player. I want to be an artist. Right. I want to make music. I want to play the piano. I want to play the violin. I want to do whatever I want to do because that's my passion. And I shouldn't feel afraid or, you know, picked on because it's not what they do. Absolutely. And I think that's what we need to tell our youth. Love that. Love that. Love all of that. <laughs> Listen. What's it four four hundred? Yeah, four four hundred. Mm -hmm. You had us at a hundred. Four four hundred. Four four hundred. Four four hundred podcast. They not coming to play. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm excited for y'all. Thank, Thank you. I've already you. tuned Thank in you. and I'm already locked in. But 
Now, which I have to give is is literally to the heart. Like I said, boy, mom, only brothers. Like I'm literally, literally the epitome of who would love a black man. Mm -hmm. So, um, with that, I know you kind of tapped to it, you tap into it a little bit in reference to the podcast. What are some of the other things you want to come from the podcast? Mm -hmm. Um. I think one for me personally, uh, like I call I call it the social therapy when we had our, our rollout. It, it is a social therapy, but at the same time, I want to have fun. Yeah, yeah, I want to have fun. But the same thing you said a minute ago about teaching the youth. The youth is locked in on a lot of internet or locked in on a lot of computer stuff. I mean, that's what we're gonna be. We're gonna be right. locked in there. So again, if you see Stu out here looking like a million bucks every chance, you know what I mean? Maybe the kids may steal his fashion statement and realize uh, Mike is not the same. Fashionista as he is, he might be into something else. Mike has a beard, and it might be a young kid out there with the beard. Like, yo, you know what? I want my beard to be like him, and I don't have to feel weird about it. You know what I mean? Or the kid might just be like, yo, this good Kush always got a hat on. Why he have a hat on? Is he bald? No, I'm not bald. <laughs> <laughs> I just like wearing hats. Right? Yeah, well, you know, somebody may um strike. So again, I just want to be. I, I think we just want to show our originality that we four different people, um, every time, mm -hmm. and we gonna be. We could still. Find common ground to play with you. Yeah, let's go. Mm -hmm. I love it. Listen, tell them where they can find you. Oh, we got some questions for you. We got, we got two yeah, questions. Question for me. Don't, try to, escape, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. try to escape by two yeah, questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Try Listen, to... I actually do spin a block. So I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> oh, I, I told you about people that said spin the block. Right? <laughs> I told you about the people that didn't spin the block. <laughs> she really fucking spin the block. I throw the two questions out to you. The first okay. one I want to ask you as far as trauma. And I say trauma in black men. Um, how do you feel, I mean, and not speaking directly to you or your whatever, just if you could speak for the women, you know, for the for women. We, I think I in our episode, ladies. I think a lot of females have been saying, y'all don't have no female love input, there, yeah. input. So, like, this is our chance. This is, this this is, is our chance. chance. Yeah. Make it count. Yeah, we're going to They're going to they they either, they either drag you for now. Wait, I'm about to say a word. I'm like, 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 do you feel like women handle the black man's trauma appropriately? Or women in general, do you feel like women handle men's trauma appropriately? I don't think there is a real appropriate way to handle anyone else's trauma. I think that we give what we have. So if I'm someone who's uh, intellectually equipped mm -hmm. or like if I have a psycho psychology background or something like that I'm gonna give you something on the lines of that someone else could have like you guys mentioned how you were raised and things of that nature I could have been raised by a strong black woman who was very nurturing to her husband and to the men in our home so I would come to you and dealing with your trauma in that fashion or I could be horrible with you know, dealing with your trauma because I just really don't know nothing. You, you are doing a great job yeah, at skating. Yeah, yeah, I just really don't know anything. Yeah. I just really don't know anything. She is ice skating. I just really don't know anything. But for me, let me answer for myself. For me, and this is what I feel about myself. Because I'm a woman who really tries to understand people. Like that's my natural personality. I really try to understand people. That can kind of be twofold. Because on one hand, whatever you give me, I'm going to try to understand it, and then I'm going to come back at you with what you've given me. Mm -hmm. You may not like that. Yeah. That may be very That's uncomfortable. Yeah. That's but that strong black woman. Which, no, no, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's different. No, it's different. It's different. It's always different. It's different. And the reason why it's different is because, because I, my understanding is my understanding. I can only give you, once again, what I have. Okay. So... You taking that offensively, I can't control that. Oh. We could have discussion and dialogue about well, she it. Got that Lois Lane but she yeah. got that Lois Lane. She got that out of her first. She got the crypto out of her first. You heard but, that. So you heard that, ladies. What, but, I'm going to take what you say. Ladies, and I'm going to take what you say. Ladies, we gave y'all a spokesperson, and this is what she did. She said she got the crypto out of her first, and she's going to put it right on you. Mm. No, seriously, but because I want to understand Okay, I'm going to give you what I have. Because I want to understand, okay, I'll, I'll use myself because, you know, it is what it is. I'm very transparent. I'll use myself. Growing up with brothers, cousins, and not having a father in my house. Like, my dad didn't even walk me across the aisle. He didn't even, and that felt crazy. Mm -hmm. Someone else who raised me, who I didn't really care for who raised me, walked me down the aisle. It felt very 
uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, my wedding still is not, like, the best day it should have been because of that right there. I understood everyone in that room was going to realize my dad didn't want me out of the house. Mm -hmm. So they were going to want to know why we're happy. Do you yeah, know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like the so the voice. best day that I spent all this money for still had that in the back of my mind, mm -hmm. right? But because of who I am, I try to understand my father. Okay. Even though it's my moment, I still try to understand him mm -hmm. and just respect it. That's dope. I didn't like it. But I don't like it still. <laughs> okay? But I had to this That's is what dope. it is and I just gotta understand it. Okay. I don't have to nudge at him. I will never bring it up another day that you did not walk me down the aisle. Because I took that in, I gotta respect that was your choice. That's the end. Every female don't have that. Right. Some their lifestyle or their household was raised. If you come at me the wrong way, I'm coming at you the same energy. Plus, 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 plus. plus. Mm -hmm. But that's not me. Everybody's different. It's the same with you guys. Right, she saved the y'all. She saved the I'm just, I'm just keeping it all the way no, she right now. I'm keeping it all the way she right now. Let me tell you what she did. She threw the rope out there. <laughs> she pulled the rope back <laughs> in. And she word smithed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. No, but that's, that's, no, that's literally what well, you it have is. You had something to add in that? Yeah, a second part to that question. So you hearing our stories and knowing how we harbor our feelings as mm -hmm. black men and have done it our whole life as a boy mom raising a black young man, how do you kind of solicit his emotions to be honest with you? Because again, as men, and I don't know him personally, but as a little black boy myself, I didn't want to share everything, mm -hmm. even with mommy sometimes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do you kind of cultivate that relationship to say, listen, you can explore and tell me things and be honest and mommy's not gonna, like how do you, how do you work around those things? Let me say this first. All of your answers to that question made me nervous. As a mom, mm -hmm. as a wife, mm -hmm. as a daughter as well. Because when I hear, I cope with it, the mask and all these things, my brain says, if a trigger hits, they go on. Mm -hmm. And because you're good men, because you're good fathers, you're good spouses or whatever the case may be, you don't deserve that. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I really mm -hmm. feel in my heart. Mm -hmm. Like you don't deserve to have that moment of that trigger happening and you blow up or you respond in the worst way and now you're only looked at as that. Mm -hmm. Does that That's make any sense? That's yeah. yeah. your worst part. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Leave that right there. Mm -hmm. okay. I like that. So answering the question, as a boy mom, because I grew up in an environment where my brothers were kind of, God bless them, my mother's not here anymore, and we've had these conversations. Mm -hmm. I'm me all the time, period. If I feel some type of way about something that you did, I, we're going to have a discussion about it. I spoke to my mom about certain things. Like, I love you. Certain things you did with my brothers, I cannot do mm -hmm. with my sons. I just can't do it. They ain't going to have no 14-year-old little girls coming in there with their drawers in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the closet and their clothes in there to change and all that. Mm -hmm. Sweetie, you're, you're, you're 15. Still. You're 16. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> like, there's not going to be any of that. You're not, a, you're not grown. Yeah. You used to live here. Not you understand what I'm saying? So certain things I knew I did not want to do as a mom because of how I was raised. Okay, with that being said, with my children, I have a 21-year-old who's autistic and I have a 9-year-old who's already a lawyer. Like, mm -hmm. I've been calling him Elijah Esquire since he was two. Trust me, Renisha knows. <laughs> Ask her about it. Like, he's, he's a different breed when it comes to intellect. I definitely have to deal with them differently, but we, we have conversations together. Mm -hmm. So when I'm saying to them, like the little one, he'll do something wrong, he do not want to tell me. And I gotta kinda pull it out of him. And I have to reiterate, listen, even if you know you're wrong, I still need you to tell me. Whatever you think is going to happen, it's probably not even going to be that bad. Like, we're going to have a conversation about it regardless. But if you don't tell me, I'm going to feel uncomfortable. Right. So we got to really do this communication thing together. That never happened in my house. I absolutely grew up in a home where there was whatever happens in this house stays in this house. Mm -hmm. So I knew I did not want that for my kids. I just happened to have boys. It would be the same way with the girls. Yeah. Like, we're going to talk about what's going on. Okay, you starting to be shapely like a whole woman, and you 12? Okay, let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let's, let's have this conversation. So, for me, as a boy mom, and then me being a correction officer, I'm rocking in my friend's kids. Mm -hmm. So, I, it would behoove me to have real conversation with my kids. Mm -hmm. about, and then you're brown. Right. So, I have to have real conversations and, and, and create a safe space for you to feel like, 
dang, like, this is crazy, but I'm going to ask my moms anyway. Yeah. Right. Period. So I feel, my husband may feel a little different, I feel that I have a healthy relationship with my sons where they can come to me about everything. And they basically do. I was going to say continue that because do. me and my brothers, we do have that relationship with my mom. And I can, again, my mother and my father, we all kind of grew up together as young adults and me as a kid to the point where even now they're 50 plus years old but we can still hang out in the lounge and all of my friends will come around and enjoy it and not feel like mom and dad are around. Right, right. Um, but I'm also, I know that my mother created that safe space where it was like, listen, we can talk about anything. I remember I was in fourth grade the first times she literally sat me and my brother down. This is what condoms are. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to use these shits for a really long time, <laughs> but I want you to <laughs> have an understanding, yeah. right? and I don't want you to try and learn it from somebody else mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. without really being able to ask questions. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions about anything, talk to me. And right. even still to this day, Mom, guess what she did? Right. <laughs> what she did. <laughs> but because we've always had that relationship, and maybe because they were younger and they were more understanding, mm -hmm. um, it's much easier to talk to a parent who's really willing to listen but at the same time, it's going to give you feedback like, I'm not going to say like a friend. It could come from a parental space, but as long as, as, long as it doesn't feel like you're being judged by that person you're telling right. it to, a.k.a. mom or dad, then they're going to feel more apt to open up about everything. Right. But good job. No. <laughs> I really appreciate you inviting us in. Everybody check out 4400 on YouTube. We're going to have the link on this they episode. Also, we missed our fourth episode. Mika, we miss you on this one. Lady She, I really appreciate yeah. you. Yes, yes. Miss you, I, miss you. I, 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 uh, hopefully we do it again soon. Once yeah, we, get we got to. Yeah, uh, you gotta come check out to. our house eventually. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah for sure. When, when, we clean, when, we clean, when we clean our house, we'll invite you over. <laughs> yeah. That's what we can do. Sweet. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, sure, for sure. Listen, fellas. I'm super excited. Congratulations in advance for all that's to come. Make sure you guys subscribe to How My Lady She Podcast on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Hit the button. Um, click the subscribe. Don't just watch the episode. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Oh, also, make sure you... Listen, y'all got to check out my dag on. I'm having a Black History sale right now where she's got tees, my mm -hmm. shirts. Order something. Um, make sure you order, order my something. book as well. Order the book as well. Yeah. Um, Get two books. One for you, one for the kids. I don't my own book. Even if you but, can't um, read. Yeah, support. Support. <laughs> Black History Month. We black, we got black men on here. Men wear off our series two, and this is how we popping right now, y'all. We out. Peace.